Hi, my name is James Bosch. I'm a psychotherapist and a burn survivor. And I'm here on behalf of the Lisa Ann Rouge Burn Foundation to talk to you about an important topic, depression. Depression is such a huge topic and we can only just kind of dive into it. But one thing I know is that for trauma survivors and burn survivors, this is a real big part of our healing and our reality. So first I wanna normalize depression. Okay, so when really bad things happen to us, it is normal to feel sad and depressed about them. So first of all, like I think we are in such a society where we gotta get happy fast. I think one thing to know about depression is that we have to normalize that depression is part of healing and it's part of the process of trauma recovery. But when depression gets so heavy, when it gets so pervasive, when it feels so big, that's where it's really painful and that's where it's, we get the feelings of hopelessness, we don't wanna leave the bed, everything feels hard, everything feels like more work, and we wanna isolate. And basically we start to listen to a lot of the fears and the heavy messages in our head and they keep us stuck. So I hope to share some stuff with you, some tools that can help you work with your depression, maybe get some movement with it, and, um, and hopefully some hope that depression is a temporary state, it's a part of our reality. So let's use this model that I like called the wheel to talk about different ways to address our depression because it's all connected. So we have the body, the mind, the spirit, and the community. These are all things that are connected and if you affect one of these quadrants, you can improve the other quadrants. They're all part of the whole of who we are. So let's start with the body. So, you know, the heaviness and the intensity we feel when we're depressed in our body, it really helps to learn some relaxation techniques, either some meditation, some yoga, some of the um, Eastern philosophies of like Qigong, Tai Chi, things that get energy moving through our body. So that's one way we can address it with the body. Another thing, which is a technique I really like called a progressive muscle relaxation technique, can help us get in our body and help move energy too. And it's basically, as complicated as you wanna make it, and you can look up some different versions of this online, but basically you start with one part of the body, you tense that muscle group, and then you release it and breathe. Then you go to the next muscle group, you tense it, release it, and breathe. And so you move, like say, from your feet to your knees and, and your calves to your thighs and your pelvic and your buttocks to your core, to your chest, to your arms, to your neck, up all the way, you can scrunch up, you can even scrunch your forehead and you can scrunch up the top of your head if you really try. So you just work through that, breathe and release, breathe and release, and breathe and release. And that's one way to relieve the stress in your body, release energy, and also bring blood flow and oxygen to your body, which can help with that feeling of depression. So progressive muscle relaxation is one thing. Now another thing, and so many studies have done, been done on this and proved this, that almost as effective as antidepressive medication, they have found exercise. Exercise is such a powerful um, cure and treatment for depression because what you're doing when you exercise, you're not only oxygenating your brain and your body, but you're stimulating important neurotransmitters in your brain, endorphins, um, serotonin, all these things that we need to feel better, that to send messages to our, our body in different um, areas of our brain, um, get stimulated with exercise. So an exercise program is really awesome for addressing depression, and that's another one of their body. Breath work, you know, connecting with your breath, bringing breath into your body, into the lower part, into your abdomen, slow rhythmic breath. There's also different breathing techniques that you can see where you breathe deep and fast. There's a lot of stuff you can research on different types of breath techniques that can make us feel better and send all kinds of positive messages to our body to help with depression. So that's some things you can do with the body. Now let's talk about the mind. So a lot of the messages that fuel our depression are these negative messages about the world or we're reacting to fears. So um, there's an acronym I love on fear that's false evidence appearing real. So if we can like kind of challenge some of these false thoughts, these negative beliefs about the world that are in our brain, either through cognitive behavioral therapy techniques or um, dialectical behavioral therapy, which really brings um, 
the mind and mindfulness together, which helps us have a less judgment, judgmental look on our feelings. You know, because feelings aren't facts, they're just feelings, they move. They move, but when we get really fixed in them, when I believe that I will always feel this way, when I believe these fears, when I believe these, these really big negative messages about the world, I respond to them and I stay stuck. So if we can change some of our thoughts and work with our brain through some of these techniques, um, we can help with our depression. The other thing is community. Depression loves isolation. So if we can somehow move out of that feeling of wanting to isolate and connect just with one person, with a couple people, with people that we trust, with um, peer groups, um, that's why peer support is so important. If we can get out of ourselves and connect with others, that can often move us out of that deep, deep depression. It's hard, right? Because we want to stay isolated. Depression says, I want you to isolate, right? Then spirit, meditation, prayer, positive affirmations, um, connecting with something outside yourself. If that's nature, great. If that's a religion, great. Whatever it is that feels bigger than you that you can tap in as a resource can also help with your depression. So, you know, if depression is a real problem for you and it's keeping you stuck and debilitated in your life, you know, I really, really um, encourage you to seek out professional help. They have found that a combination of talk therapy and medication is usually together the best approach to um, severe depression, major depressive disorder. You know, because the medication helps with the chemistry and the talk therapy helps you untangle why you're feeling so depressed. So that is sometimes the best approach, but it's not necessarily one or the other, whatever works for you. You know, there's so many resources in the community. You know, one of my favorite teachers, Pima Chodron says, you know, that you are the sky and everything else is just weather. So I love that because it just means like if we cannot attach that this is how it will always be and that these things are gonna pass, you know, that each day is a new beginning, that um, we can find hope in any little thing that can move us out of that fixed place that makes us feel stuck and makes us feel so down and, and that deep sadness. And at the same time, we don't judge our sadness, that maybe our sadness is a door to some healing and some growth that we need. So if we can hang out there a little bit, can we learn something about ourselves and can we grow? So those are just some thoughts of mine uh, that I've learned through my work and through my life on depression. And, and you know, just know that you don't have to do it alone, that there is hope. And if you need more, more resources and more help, reach out to the Lisa Ann Rouge Byrne Foundation, reach out to your community, reach out to your peer group anybody and just uh, know that there's no shame in having feelings. Thank you.